let us know if we're on the church's website or if we're on my personal website. We need to know. Uh, <laughs> Please, hopefully, please. yeah, we've been messing with this, and hopefully we're on the church's website. And you'd think some things would be the same each time, but yeah, oh. sometimes technology uh, has a different idea. Of, oh, they want to see some ads. Let's put up some ads. Yeah. I want to have church yeah. today. I want to sure. welcome all of you who are uh, joining us from Sweeney, Texas, and from North Dakota, and from the West Coast, and other places in between, and in the East Coast. We know of some in Virginia. And so it's just great to have all of you with us, and, and we appreciate uh, the supportiveness and the encouragement to uh, have this live stream service uh, made available to you. Again, please let us know. About joys and concerns. Yes. We haven't had too many. Uh, some of them were shared already on Wednesday. We uh, understand that uh, uh, Lucille yeah. is still healing. Good. Good for you, Lucille. Keep it up. Uh, Frank, thank you for the good job you're doing, taking care of her and getting things done so she doesn't have to sit and worry. And we need her sassy self to be back. We do. We do. <laughs> but when you say that, you know, she's good for kind of coming up on you quietly. And, yeah, I know. And suddenly there she is. Oh, uh -huh. there she is. No, she is. I want to, I wish someone would uh, write something to us so I can tell if we are live on your page or the church's page? Yes, please. Oh, she's Tracy, watching. Trisha, wait. All right, yeah, that's where I pushed last time and it went away. So I'm not gonna wave back. I mean, <laughs> I'm not gonna touch it. All right, Trisha. Trisha uh, and uh, her sister Renee Coulter had uh, a funeral in the family. They are cousins. Okay. Uh, mother, Jessie Nail, passed away last week and we had service at the pavilion in the Sweeney Cemetery on Friday at uh, 10 and it was, it's an extended family private service but what a joy to be with that family and to get more you get to know more about uh, Lucille and her surviving husband JR who mm -hmm. will continue to be living in the fountains in Sweeney and we'll keep in touch uh, with him so let us know send us your joys and concerns I thought one of the joys this week was when uh, the news report came out of how the environment is doing now that yes. there aren't as many cars and there aren't as many uh, uh, other environmentally <laughs> impactful uh, situations going yes. on. In India, there was a most striking picture that now the air is so clear in Delhi, you can see the snow-capped mountains off in the distance and they haven't seen that for decades. Well, that was good news. Let's hope it kind of keeps on. It w I mean, it'll come... It come back when we rejoin the world, but, <laughs> but maybe we'll have a but greater maybe sensitivity. Maybe we'll have learned something. Maybe yes. So. Okay. Maybe so. Let's prepare our hearts uh, for worship. Don't have any other joys and concerns. Oh, okay. Let's do it with sanctuary. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Pure and holy. Tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Good morning, Emma. I see you're watching. That's good. We'd like to... I uh, have our hymn of praise next, and uh, this morning we're doing verses from He Leadeth Me. Oh. 
perfect. We humbly confess that we have not loved thee with our heart and soul and mind and strength. All that we have not loved one another as Christ has loved us. Thy life is within our souls, but our selfishness hath hindered thee. We have not lived by faith. We have resisted thy spirit. We have neglected thine inspirations. Forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and in thy spirit direct what we shall be, and thou mayest come into the full glory of thy creation, in us and in all the people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray for a few seconds in silence, acknowledging your confessions. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the expiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Our scripture this morning begins in the book of Acts. Sorry. Reading from the second chapter, verses 42 to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. And then from Peter's first letter in the second chapter, these verses. For one is approved of, mindful of God. He endures pain while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if when you do wrong and are beaten for it, you take it patiently? But if when you do right and suffer for it, you take it patiently. You have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. Mm -hmm. He committed no sin, 
No guile was found on his lips. And when he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Thank you, Cindy. But he trusted to him who, judge, who judges justly. He himself bore out sins, our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but now have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Here ends the reading of God's word to us. May it be a blessing for our daily living. I'm getting notices that it might be being posted on my Facebook page. I hope we can um, transfer that to the church's <laughs> we can do that. Facebook page. Okay. Uh, but we're going to continue at this point because several of you are with us anyway. Uh, we can find it on, what, what is your uh, page, is Charlene Richardson? We can find that yes. on Facebook? Yes. Okay. okay. Affirmation of faith. No, not yet. Oh, not yet? No. Oh, did I miss the sermon? No, I haven't missed Not the sermon. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> the pastoral prayer, though, maybe. <laughs> Will you join me in prayer? <laughs> Eternal and loving and creating God, all that is shows your hand of creation upon it. And then you give us eyes to see, ears to hear, to taste, to feel, and to be aware of your presence in all of creation, to enjoy it as a way of giving you thanks and glory. This earth, this precious place, is home to not only peoples of generations and races and creeds, but it is your home as well. And in our hearts, we pray you will find a place to dwell. For many are experiencing heavy hearts, aching hearts, unexpected loss of loved ones, a sense of fear and apprehension, a hope that something good can come of this and that research around the world can together find a way to combat this pandemic. Lord, the only thing that stands between us and between us and you are the sins that separate us. Give us strength of heart and mind and soul to find ways to come together. Find ways to accept each other and find in that moment of acceptance and forgiveness your redemption. These are troubling times, Lord, and we don't know our way. There is no map we can just Google or find online. But we know that whatever our way might be, it is, we pray, your way that we seek. It is your way that that brings us closer to one another and to you. And for that we rejoice and give you thanks and praise. Here now as we pray together the prayer your son taught us, saying,
join me in the aff affirmation of faith. <coughs> and at Sweeney, you have done this one before, and we want to uh, use it again. It's a statement of faith of the Korean United Methodist Church. We, we believe, believe in, in the one God, God creator, creator and sustainer of all things, father of all nations, the source of all goodness and beauty, all truth and love. God manifest in the flesh. We believe in Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, our teacher, example, and redeemer, the savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God, God present with, with us for guidance, for comfort, for comfort and, and for strength. We, we believe, believe in the forgiveness, forgiveness of sins, in the life of love and, and prayer, and in grace equal to every need. We, we believe in the word of God contained in the Old and New Testaments as the sufficient rule both of faith and of practice. We believe, we believe in the church, those who are united in the living Lord, for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God as the divine will realized in human society and in the family of God, where we are all brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumph of righteousness and in the life everlasting. Amen. Okay. If you'll join us in our next hymn, it's the hymn of preparation, and it is Have Thine Own Way, Lord, and we'll give Arthur a chance to get that accompaniment up. trouble finding us on the service you have your phone I'll answer those people and tell them that again I have messed up where we have messed up and put it on my page only um, okay oh boy we got a lot of phone calls uh, <laughs> um, answer all of them? Oh, no. Or maybe uh, some of the uh, 
viewers can uh, call G, uh, Jodina and Kelly are not finding it. And Kay Brightwell. And Kay Brightwell. Now here's a friend, uh, Mickey Ferris from Oklahoma City, who's yeah. watching this morning. Uh -huh. Good morning, Mickey. Tammy Sherman, it's on Charlene's page. Okay, yeah. thank you, Tammy. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. We'll see what we can do. But if you just go to my Facebook page, um, that will get you on. Oh, we're getting another message. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, we've gotten some now from the players. There's Pat Anderson. She finally got us. Persistence pays off, Pat. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> Oh, yes. And here come John and Paula, or John Playa and yeah. his wife, um, Charlotte. Charlotte? Mm -hmm. They'll be joining uh, the church. Yeah, yeah yes, today. Hi, Marilyn. <laughs> Our cousin from North Dakota. Mm -hmm. We saw that Kelly was watching earlier. So, hi, Kelly and Scott. And Betty. I Kelly saw and Betty. Scott, who are they? Yeah. Uh, just some people. Scott is our Virginia. son in Virginia. Yeah. And you tell his, that every time. His wife, yeah. Kelly. Well, I'm happy and proud of them. <laughs> and did I mention that there's a, a grandson yeah. coming yeah, in June? Did. I did. Okay. Yeah, she did. Okay, well, I think it is time. We've had our hymn of preparation, so now we can prepare for your sermon. I didn't forget today. Let's prepare for the word. While I was in higher education and president of the United Methodist College in Iowa, Sorry. we had a chance to get to know more of the Japanese culture as a number of, of students from Tokyo University in Japan came to be a part of our campus. It was understandable since our brothers and sisters in the former Evangelical United Brethren Church were so mission-minded and so many missionaries uh, graduated from our school and went abroad. But I came across a legend, a legend from long ago. Rikyu Sen no Rikyu, a mere youth sought to learn the elaborate ritual customs known as the Way of Tea. Centuries before Starbucks introduced chai to its coffee lovers, or even the British instituted tea time into its cultural makeup, the Way of Tea was an oriental mainstay. It describes not an art or a hobby, but a way of life, its own values, ethics, and morals. Rikyu traveled to the tea master, Takino Jo, who tested the younger man by asking him to tend his garden, another sacred tradition in Japanese culture. And Rikyu weeded and cultivated and planted and cared for growth until the garden was aesthetically perfect. But before presenting the impeccably tilled garden to his master, he scrutinized the immaculate landscape and discerned something was wrong. The scene was too perfect. He shook a cherry tree, causing a few flowers to spill randomly upon the perfectly manicured ground, and a new way of looking at life was created. And in Japan, it's called Wabi Sabi. While the prevailing aesthetic of 15th century Japan had preferred lavishness, rich ornamentation, and absolute perfection, Sendo Rikyu introduced what became a venerated alternative, which continues to be revered to this day. Wabi Sabi is the art of finding beauty in the imperfect, in the impermanent, the incomplete. It, appear, it appreciates the underlying beauty in what is modest and humble and unconventional. And his new way created a different path to peace, an achievement made possible by the rustic simplicity it appreciated. It's what the writer Kathleen Norris saw in Lemon, South Dakota. Now, Tim Ryerson can tell you about Lemon, South Dakota, but you really have to want to get there to get away up in northwestern uh, part of the state small town of crossroads uh, from uh, farms surrounding the area. But I remember uh, as a radio announcer reading weather forecasts and always the temperature in Lemon 
was as accurate as it had been forecast. It had an amazing record of accuracy. But the author Kathleen Norris saw something special in that little town. It's what the photographer Walker Evans saw when he pointed a camera at impoverished southerners in the 1930s. Nevertheless, most of us in the West find it difficult to understand. And although wabi-sabi has become a deeply ingrained concept in Japanese culture, it remains almost impossible to explain to Westerners there's no direct translation that exists. But this award-winning writer and photographer in this country and this humble young man in a faraway country give us the confidence that what we face together today still has some beauty to be found and shared on the other end. Simply stated, Wabi Sabi stands for everything that today's sleek and mass-produced and technology-saturated culture is not. Flea markets instead of shopping malls. Aging oak floors over sheet floor coverings. Wabi Sabi sees loveliness in a single morning glory rather than a dozen of perfect roses. It understands the tender, raw beauty of a gray December landscape and the aching elegance of an abandoned cabin and shed on the prairie. It celebrates cracks and crevices, rotting timber and ravages, all the marks that time and weather and use leave behind. To discover Wabi Sabi is to see the singular beauty in that which initially looks ugly and decrepit. You know, in some ways, it sounds to me like a description of the gospel. When we feel spiritually ugly or morally decrepit, we turn to a savior, one who knows how to make something beautiful out of our tattered lives. Even in these weeks after Easter, when we had hoped that the dazzle of the resurrection and the fragrance of the lily would last just a little bit longer, we already sense a quick return to the same old routine, the same old stresses, and yes, even new and greater anxieties. Even if we experienced an absolutely perfect Easter this year, the familiar story rang true and the music inspired. And now in the fourth week of Easter, our souls already feel less than buoyant. Lots of wabi, no sabi. In our scripture, the Apostle Peter directs our attention to a Savior who used his suffering as a tableau on which to display the full nature of the gospel. His experience is our example. Peter says that's why we must learn to accept, to do right, and thereby silence the ignorance of the foolish ones to live as servants, to show respect, to love one another, and to fear God. We must learn, Peter says, and practice these things, not just under favorable circumstances, but even under the most exasperating contexts. If we can, predict, if we can practice spiritual wabi-sabi under duress, then perhaps we understand the person and work of our Savior, who while sinless himself and without deceit, suffered for our sakes. When Jesus was abused, he did not abuse in return. When suffering, he did not threaten. His body carried, however, the ravages of mistreatment. And by the end of his life, scars marked his wrists and his side. Thorns scratched deeply into his forehead. Leather cords weighted with sharp bones or stones shredded the flesh on his back. His feet were calloused from walking throughout Galilee. His heart was broken when friends died, when the faithless walked away, when the ones he loved most failed to get it. The body of our Lord bore the marks of great pain and suffering. And yet Jesus carried with him such unspeakable beauty such greatness of power, such wondrous glory, and there is no stretch to call him our Savior.
Jesus teaches us to embrace our sufferings and the many imperfections of our lives and then let them bring to us wabi-sabi beauty that is deep, compassionate, and unspeakably radiant. It's the sort of pearl in the oyster event. Peter calls the endurance of unjust suffering an opportunity to receive God's blessing. Suffering when we live righteously brings a peculiar duty that he will not leave unrewarded. By his wounds, scripture assures us, we are healed. We've never been more poignantly reminded that we live today in a wounded culture, afraid world. Riku's garden was too perfect and needed some imperfection. The gardens of our world, our culture, our community, and our souls are, in contrast, too often unsightly and overrun with disorder and imperfection. The cherry tree has been shaken, and we now need those who will till the soil, tend the grass, and pull the weeds, and clip the hedges. Beauty, holiness, justice, and righteousness are indeed hard work. The writer Marsha Kolb explains it this way. Simply put, she writes, I'm lopsided. In 1995, I was stricken with the worst case of Bell's palsy that any of three doctors had ever seen. I had medical care, holistic care, massage, acupuncture, took a mother load of supplements, and changed my diet. I did it all for several months. I looked and felt like the Phantom of the Opera. Grotesque, horrific. I got up every morning and looked in the mirror and I cried. Cole goes on to explain how she discovered the value of suffering. Two years later, she opened a shelter for disabled parrots. Yes, birds. She took a hundred of the squawking parrots and later wrote they were all lopsided and cattywampus like I was. But they were so sweet and I saw such tender beauty in them that I began to have compassion for myself. And it was then that I looked around at the world and I saw the same thing all around me. The lopsided of the world, those who are not normal, those who've been hurt, disabled in the world's terms, born with disabilities, scarred by life, these are some of the sweetest, kindest, deepest, tenderest human beings. I've had the privilege to know. In fact, she wrote, it is often the so-called normal healthy ones who worry me, just like you. By his wounds, we have been healed. And by his calling, we come back home. At his watch, our souls are protected. Just as Rikyu famously served a drink that brought peace, Jesus invites us to a table where the drink served brings us peace and more. The cup holds more than a simple beverage. It holds salvation, a fresh start, a new covenant cost of this cup involved taking of a life. The bizarre thing is that the whole grisly bi uh, business creates a beautiful feast. The cup we share portends a new way of life. Rikyu went to a cherry tree. Jesus went to the cross. Rikyu shook some cherry blossoms. Jesus shed his blood. Jesus our Savior, showing us the light in darkness, in joy, in pain, and hope, in despair. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Amen. The hymn of commitment this morning is, O Jesus, I have promised. We'll sing three of the verses.
to have reception of new members. Isn't it great that even in the uh, time of live streaming, we can uh, bring in six new members? I think that's wonderful. I'll turn it over to Arthur. I'll introduce you to them. Okay. Uh, Mary and Don Coulter, John and Charlotte Playa, Tammy and Julia Sherman. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, maker of heaven and earth, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, and in the Holy Spirit, thus make known their desires, these people thus make known their desires to live their daily lives as disciples of Jesus Christ. And they covenant together with God and with the members of this local church to keep the vows which are a part of the order of confirmation and reception into the church. And so I have sent the questions on ahead so they will be ready to uh, respond and they are going to text their answer which is simply uh, I do or I will. Do you agree to renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of the world and repent of, your, of their sin? And do you accept the freedom and power of God to give them to resist evil, injustice and oppression? If so, you will answer, I do. And there come the answers. Do you promise to confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and put your whole trust in his grace, promising to serve him as their Lord, and to remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? If so, you will answer, I will. There come the answers. Will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries, to faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, 
your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, you will answer, I do. Thank you. Will you receive and profess the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament? If so, you will answer, I will. Now at this point, the congregation would read the following, and so, in your hearts, hear these words and send them in the direction of our new members and fellowship. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we, we welcome, welcome you in, in Christian love. love. As, As members together, together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we, we renew our covenant, covenant faithfully to, to participate in the ministries of the Church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. And so, uh, figuratively speaking, we offer you the right hand of fellowship. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> you can wave and applaud. Yeah. But we welcome you all and we thank you for your faithfulness to the church and uh, uh, accepting this uh, important decision in your lives. Thanks be to God. At this time, we're going to have the offertory. Ah. And this is a time of personal meditation on self, on service, and tithe. And we have... Greg Wiggers with us via his music to uh, accompany your meditations. Thank you, Greg. And here is his selection. Lots of love on that one. Can't you just hear the roar of the crowd <laughs> and oh. the applause? So many of you have uh, been missing Greg and his music. Oh. <laughs> and that's some more of his music, but we'll let, save that for another time. Um, we got lots of hearts. Thank you. 
celebration anniversary. <laughs> celebrate their 62nd anniversary. Wow, bless you. On the 9th of May, coming up. For birthdays this week, Carson Willard is celebrating his 14th on the 2nd of May. So that was yesterday, I believe. Okay. If you have others, please let us know. And um, we will go on to joys and concerns, Mr. Arthur. No joys and concerns or announcements. Well, announcements. Oh, I see you were supposed to text us joys and concerns. That's the announcement. <laughs> Read <right>. the script. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. um, it's the practice of Sweeney First United Methodist Church to have communion on the first Sunday of the month. However, because of yeah. some circumstances, uh, we're going to um, move communion to next Sunday and give you a chance to prepare. Uh, this will be a new experience, but uh, your preparation will involve bringing some kind of uh, cracker or roll or bread, along with some grape juice or uh, juice, water is fine, uh, and have it uh, with you while you are watching so that we can consecrate the elements together. There was a, an interesting question uh, raised by several of the bishops that uh, we can't do this over long distance. We need to be in community. And uh, there was a lot of uh, response uh, from lay people and clergy alike saying, even when we're watching live stream, we're in community. And if you can pray for us from a distance, you can consecrate elements from a distance. And so we're going to do that and go ahead with communion uh, next Sunday on Mother's Day. So okay. it will be all the more uh, a special service. Okay. Next week is Mother's Day. Oh, all right. <laughs> she thought I didn't know. Oh. Well, you, I should say, you know, they should understand. This is a joy and concern. Charlene just came home from a 12-hour shift. <laughs> 7 o'clock last night until 7 o'clock this morning. She took a nap. I did not have to wake her. She got herself up. <laughs> Doesn't she look great? Oh. Thank yes, you. Bruce, I know uh, you're going to recommend to the DS that if I should ever, <laughs> and so forth. <laughs> Speaking of Bruce Luna, our chair of Board of Stewards, there will be a Zoom meeting of the Board of Stewards on Wednesday uh, at 2 o'clock. Uh, those of you uh, who are not voting members of the board are welcome to join the discussion, but uh, do contact Marty for the uh, event number and the password so that you can join and, and listen in, look in on the, uh, the discussion. Several good announcements and several good things have happened uh, to this church recently. The $22,000 uh, grant from the Texas mm -hmm. Methodist Foundation, uh, there was a uh, uh, it's the PPP payroll protection plan mm -hmm. for which the church was approved and then there was a microwave, <laughs> micro loan <laughs> offered to uh, churches who have special uh, programs or needs and our uh, programs of feeding the children through Feed My Lambs and Backpack Buddies will continue. But we also received uh, some uh, financial support from a third source and that is a micro loan uh, from the Texas Methodist Foundation to be repaid at an interest rate of 2%. I think they and, like us. And that total was uh, $10,000 uh, from the loan. So, God is working, yes. and God is moving, and the faithful people of this church, and those who, even from a distance, have sent in support, are making good things happen. We're preparing uh, for our children and youth programs to uh, take hold when we reach uh, some sort of, I, I hate to use the word normalcy, I don't know what the word is, yeah. <laughs> but when, when we're out and about again, uh, we want to have uh, different kinds of uh, programming for the youth. The Family Life Center in Sweeney at the United Methodist Church is really the only facility of its kind in the town, and the youth have no place to gather. 
no place to hang out. And yes, there's a bit of a basketball court there, but there are corners in which we can have Bible study, and there are facilities that uh, make it uh, available not only to the youth and some of their programs, but also uh, was a very active and responsive uh, distribution center at the time of Hurricane wow. Harvey. So uh, we want to continue our stewardship and responsibility for that facility and to uh, make sure that it is in uh, good care and condition. And you'll be hearing uh, more about that and how those uh, grants are helping us to accomplish just those goals. And I might add, even though those things are um, coming, we appreciate your uh, weekly tithing or monthly tithing because those are special things and we need for our church to continue. We need your regular tithes and offerings. Now, one more announcement um, mm -hmm. for Tuesday. Speaking of, Tuesday mm -hmm. is Giving Tuesday. And uh, this year uh, I have put forth My Heart's Appeal, which is the uh, school in West Africa, in Liberia. It's the only school of its kind in all of West Africa, but it's a United Methodist related school for special education. Uh, I serve as its uh, chair for the, the board of trustees, and so a part of my responsibility and stewardship is to see that uh, we have uh, opportunities to support that school, especially their scholarships, so that uh, teachers can be paid and so forth. You can go to the website, www.myheartsappeal.org, and you can donate there. There's a second button if uh, you want to give through the uh, United Methodist Board of Global Ministries. If your church uh, uh, likes credit uh, for that, and many do, uh, you can give through the advance on the My Heart's Appeal website as well. 100% of any donation to My Heart's Appeal directly or through the advance is uh, given to the school. Uh, we're especially interested in our students who, whose families can't always afford the, the uh, tuition. And our goal is to find 70 persons who will commit to $50 a month and 50 persons who will commit to $10 a month. It's the latter that supports our respite care. We have a respite care program where siblings of those uh, our students come in and have days of activities and lunch and uh, nap time and breakfast, Snack. and so forth, <laughs> and uh, it mm -hmm. gives mom and dad some respite, so, some time, it's in six hours uh, on a Saturday during the month, each month, to just get things done that they otherwise have a hard time scheduling, or, or maybe just to rest uh, from their intensive care of their special education uh, child. So um, that's Tuesday, special giving. Uh, uh, Giving mm -hmm. Tuesday, and you'll also uh, see the Network for Good, of which we are a member. That's our uh, donation management system. Okay. Any other uh, announcements? No. No, am I missing something? Nope, I don't no. think so. Let us. If so, close. write in. Let us know. Call us. Let us know. Text us. Yeah. And we will try next week to get this posted right. <laughs> well, if they don't change things on us. Then... I know. It just seems like every time I go in, the a, screen is different. It's a different or, screen. Yeah. And I, I got it on my Facebook. But Cindy Scarborough said she will post it on the um, sure. church's website. So be patient. And it will be there. And we appreciate your being with us. And... Uh, Continue to forgive us when we make our mistakes. <laughs> and say a little prayer of blessing for for Cindy. And yeah. And she has been such a tremendous help. Yes. Okay. Receive the benediction, if you will. Oh, oh, oh that that's, is, that's, a, little that's a little high. Well, that's... And God will you raise you up on eagle's wings. Bear you on the breath of God, make you to shine like the sun, and clothe you in the palm of God's hand.
us well, church. Be loved, be safe. God bless. Amen.